If you were in dire need of money, and your family's most treasurable antique is worth a million dollars, what would be your next move? Would you be terrified to wear a piece of jewelry that cost hundreds of thousands? This man brought in a collection of 1920s jewelry that belonged to his great aunt, Indiola. When Indiola got married to an airline promoter, they lived in the high societies of New York, and the guest presumed that she purchased the pieces from there. All the jewelries he brought were high-grade art deco pieces, including an engraved rock crystal with seed pearl and diamond necklace, a diamond bracelet, a diamond brooch with a Ceylon sapphire, natural pearl necklace, and a Golconda diamond ring. When you talk to a connoisseur of diamonds, and if you say you have a Golconda stone, this is the type of thing that makes them weak in the knees, basically. Ah, great. The jewelries didn't have any marks on them, but their designs indicated that some were American, while some were European. One of the jewelries valued as high as... At auction, would be between seventy dollars and $90,000. Wow. In total, they all valued between $145,000 to $197,000. Years later, their value pumped up to $213,000 to $265,000. I really appreciate your bringing them in today. Well, thank you very much. It's great to hear these kinds of values. When her mother went to clean the house of an elderly neighbor that passed away, she was given this bracelet to do with it as she pleased. She was smart to keep the bracelet in her possession because it turned out to be a valuable piece. It's very classic Bakelite design. It's called the Philadelphia bracelet. The guest brought in the bracelet and some purses which she acquired while collecting. All items were made from Bakelite, a synthetic plastic material invented by a Belgian chemist, Leo Hendrik Bakeland. The pieces were in the Art Deco style and widely made during the 20th century. Like most vintage items, the demand for Bakelite items became higher over the years. The guest was absolutely thrilled to hear the value of her items. And I'm going to say conservatively, it's worth between $6,000 and $8,000. No way! <laughs> In total, the items valued between nine dollars to $11,000. Oh, oh, thank you so much. And I'd like to hug you or send another. <laughs> This man not only came with a painting, he also came with the dress worn by the subject in the painting and a toy wagon which also appeared in the painting. He was very fascinated by the painting, so he bought it off the hands of some distant cousins who didn't want it. To show how much he loved this painting, he even borrowed a sum of $20,000 from his father to buy it. Will he be on the winning side or the losing end with this investment? The painting was done in the 19th century, and the subjects, Anne and Joseph Jacobs, were children of a wealthy family living in Wooster, Ohio. And then we started looking at it, and really it is a Midwestern painting, and there's very little body of work to mm -hmm. talk about Ohio folk art portraiture. According to the appraiser, the lack of background scenery and the flat faces of the subjects didn't allow it to reach the status of being a great folk art painting. It was given a value of thirty to forty thousand dollars is an easy for a painting bought twenty years ago for twenty thousand dollars. Was this a good or bad investment? In the case of these items, a piece attached to them is more sought after than the main items themselves. The items are Delta candlesticks made by a visual artist, Robert Jarvie. They belong to the great grandmother of the guest and were passed down till they got to her. Though she loved the candlesticks very much and used them occasionally, she knew basically nothing about them. Other than finding out the maker's name when she went to the Chicago Art Institute, she was still pretty much clueless about the candlesticks. The candlesticks were made in the 20th century, and the bobash, which was used to keep the wax away from the body of the piece, was often misplaced, thereby making the bobash highly sought after. Because the candlesticks weren't as magnificent as some of the others made by Robert Jarvie, they were valued at eight to twelve hundred dollars. Wow! Wow! Don't repair your antiques yet. You might just chip away its value. It might be wiser to seek a professional's advice before attempting to restore them. This lady's table, which was passed down from her grandmother, was made in the 18th century. 
for furniture that survived that long, it wasn't strange that it needed some sort of repair. But unfortunately, the repair done to it caused a decrease to its value. The tilt-top table was made of mahogany, and its design migrated to America from England. So it is a, it's a Pennsylvania table uh, made in the George II style. So in England in the 18th century, this tilt-top table was all the rage. These designs uh, migrated over to America. Its legs, which were referred to as snake leg with a pad foot, wasn't the original leg the table came with and was fixed years later. Although the condition of the table was decent, it had been stripped off of most of its originality and the value for it was placed at fifteen to twenty-five hundred dollars. When she was asked to guess what her bowl was worth, she said ten thousand dollars. Sadly, she was overreaching. The bowl was a twentieth century polar bear ceramic fish bowl that was used to keep fish. Fish keeping was popular during that period, and the polar bear was a design that was widely used for the pieces. And it's probably Austrian? Austrian, Eastern okay. European. The bull had been in the guest family for two generations, and her grandmother passed it on to her father. While it was at her grandmother's place, it was used to keep fish. But once it came down to her father, it sustained a crack, so they ceased from using it. The bull just sat beautifully on top of the mantle in their home. For the value, it fell between twelve to eighteen hundred dollars. Okay, thank you, thank you. That's a very far cry from the ten thousand dollars she had hoped for, but who knows? It might be worth that someday. A blank lithograph that was designed by a company called Donaldson Lithographing was used as a poster to advertise a fair in Shepherdstown. The guest bought the poster for forty dollars from a man who sold items that were used in the fair. The lithograph wasn't made specifically for the fair, but was made by Donaldson as a blank. They were made in bulk, and people who wanted to use them bought and printed their names on it. Okay. And this is one of the rare few that I've seen that were actually used by a local fair. Okay. Because their art designs were made in a generic manner, these types of lithographs could serve various events. The lithograph was valued at at auction, I would estimate this piece between $800 and $1,200. Oh, really? Okay. Excellent. Thank you. A good day at the fair. I'll say. Yeah. According to the appraiser, this miniature furniture that came in the exact design as the bigger, regular size furniture may have been samples or custom made. Was there a large dresser like this yes, also? Yes, very much And like a that. large bed like this. Mm -hmm. Yes. They were owned by the grandmother of the guest and were later given to her mother when she was hospitalized for polio as a child. The hospital her mother was admitted allowed her to keep the furniture while she was there. The furniture was a great representation of Victorian pieces that were made around the 19th century with chestnut wood. Their values were... The bed is probably worth between two and three hundred and fifty dollars mm -hmm. and the dresser is probably worth between $450 and $650. Oh, wow. Do you find it unusual for a lady to wear a man's watch? This watch, which the lady came with, actually belonged to her father. It was a Rolex Oyster model, made in the mid-20th century, and it was the second of its kind to appear on the roadshow. Aside the fact that wristwatches became very collectible items, the unique dial on the guest watch made it a more sought-after piece. Well, only one other example of a Rolex with that particular dial. The father of the guest bought the watch at an auction for 450 pounds, and on the show, it got appraised at... Now, I wouldn't promise that for this, but I'd certainly think about 15,000. People like this guest, who used these posters as decor for their rooms, would have never have thought they'd be worth so much money years later. The man was part of a mailing list, and every week he would get posters delivered to him from Bill Graham, a concert promoter. The guest racked up a couple hundred of the postcards over the years, including the famous Flying Eyeball poster for Jimi Hendrix's concert and the Kinks poster for Taj Mahal's concert. For posters that were used as bedroom decor and could have been easily damaged by tape, it was a bit surprising to hear them being graded as mint and in great condition. Uh -huh. But even yet today, they're really rare because 
kids hung them on their wall with tacks and tape, and right. they were so small, they weren't like a regular rock poster, and right. so a lot of them have kind of gone by the wayside. Their cumulative value was 8000 to $10,000. Thank you, Bill Graham, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of people found this snake lamp creepy and didn't want it, but the value it received on the show might have made them regret their actions. The piece had been in her family for years, and its maker was a French iron worker, Edgar Brandt. Edgar did a lot of prominent works, with one of his most famous being Escalier Molien Staircase in Louvre. Edgar's exceptional pieces were greatly demanded, and this led to a lot of reproductions in the marketplace. The lamp on the show, called La Tentation, was verified as an original piece, and the owner was elated to hear that. And this is one of the lamps that he made. This came in two sizes. It came this size and it came in a table size. Even with the discoloration of the lamp, it received a value between thirty-five to forty-five thousand dollars. No kidding! Mm. Wow. <gasps> That's incredible. It must have been heart crushing for this man when he heard that both items, which he bought at an auction, were fake. Was the money he spent to purchase these items a waste, or did his investment pay off? The pieces were bought from an estate auction that was held by the daughter of one of the founders of Wamego, Kansas. Both pieces graced the front of the auction catalog, which the guest brought with him to the show. He spent roughly $1,000 for both pieces without having the slightest idea that they were fake. The pieces were highly decorated, and if you don't have a professional eye, you would easily believe that they were original. These were both made in Europe, probably in Germany or Austria, possibly in France, and they were hand-painted with very high-quality skill in imitation of things that had been made before and put fake marks on them about a hundred years ago. Thankfully, his money didn't go to waste, and he was able to recoup it with a little profit. Both valued at $2,500 to $3,750. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for coming in. Due to the lack of printing presses during the time that this lithograph was made, it had to be printed on 12 different sheets and then merged together. The lithograph was that of a privately owned public saltwater swimming pool known as Sutro Baths. Uh, they actually burned down in the 1960s. Oh, 60s. Uh, but they were really in, in work through, basically through the First World War was the height of their popularity. The establishment was very large in size, and the pool could hold 1.7 million gallons of water. Aside from the pool, there were restaurants, rooms, and a theater within the premises of the building. A friend of the guest gifted him the lithograph, and it was kept folded until two years prior to when he took it to the show. Apart from a few tears on the piece, its condition was excellent. So I would say an auction estimate of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars would not at all be out of out of range. Oh wow, that's great! Thank you. Harriet Frischmuth, a prominent American sculptor, made this bronze hood ornament, which the guest was given when her father's bronze collection was divided among herself and her sisters. The sculpture was a rare piece of Harriet's, which was made in 1923. And the piece you have is signed by her, and it's dated 1923, which is the high point of her career. Harriet studied with exceptional artists, like Augusta Rodin. She made various sculptures of women, and her pieces were exhibited in top museums, such as National Academy of Design and Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. Instead of being used as a hood ornament, like it was sculpted to be, the piece served as a paperweight for the guest. Its value was totally mind-blowing for the owner. At auction, a piece like this would probably bring between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Would you classify this painting as scary? Growing up, this lady found the painting scary, unlike her mom, who owned it and was totally fascinated by it. It was an oil-on-canvas painting of Aspen Street done by Lauren Mosley. Mosley was a Southwest artist who painted landscapes, murals, and figures. 
Other than making artworks, Mosley was also one of the founders of the Fine Art Department at the University of Texas. And there was some controversy because he and his partner wanted to use live models as... The guest painting was done in 1947, and it was exhibited at the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Exhibition of Western Artists in 1948. Its value? I would imagine to sell at auction anywhere between 30 and 50,000. <laughs> no, <laughs> really? A pair of historic autographed sneakers was brought in after the guest mother saved them from being discarded. The shoes not only worn, but also signed by the famous basketball player, Larry Bird. The guest mother got these Adidas shoes in 1978 during a basketball practice at Indiana State University. Despite its worn appearance, with toning and scuffing, the old shoes are estimated to be worth between twenty to $30,000. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, it, it's... I would never have guessed that. It's a, it does better uh, in, in your house. This seemingly ordinary bottle of cognac holds a remarkable history, starting as a gift to the guest father-in-law on his 50th birthday in 1959. Passed down, it became a milestone gift for the son's 50th birthday in 2000. The revelation of its true value came to light as the bottle contained Remy Martin that has been served at a royal banquet offered to King George VI and Queen Elizabeth in 1938. It's not only an exceptional brandy, but also housed in an exquisite Baccarat-made vessel. This makes it a collectible not just for its quality of brandy, but also because it's such an amazing piece of glass. The unopened contents and the original stopper contribute to its rarity, suggesting an insurance value of at least $8,000, much to the guest's disbelief. I just can't believe that. <laughs> I just can't. This captivating artwork, called the Persian Book, was brought from the Grand Central Art Gallery in New York and has a rich history dating back to the early 1930s. The painting was created by Havset Pushman, an artist born in Armenia with a profound interest in Asian arts. The Asian figure is highlighted between a symbol of rebirth with the blossom on the right and also with the really delicately fading away rose in the, in the, in the small vase. And that speaks to his great interest in the mysticism and the spiritualism of Asia. Pushman sometimes wrote a letter about the paintings and passed his thoughts to the new buyers. <clears throat> the artist wrote to my grandfather uh, after he purchased the painting. He said, uh, I'm pleased to learn from the Grand Central Art Galleries that you purchased my painting, the Persian book, and you expressed the desire to know the artist, from the artist, the spiritual meaning of the painting. My paintings are compositions of a past that probably never existed except in my own imagination. And I use art objects of the Orient as in your painting. The painting has an exceptional quality, style, provenance, and literature. How much would its value be? I think it should be insured at somewhere between $50,000 and $75,000. Okay. Thank you very much. This woman brought a captivating book with which she inherited with his father, and it unveils an interesting history. Seemingly ordinary on the outside, it is, in fact, a limited edition of Shakespeare's sonnets by the Roycroft Press. William Shakespeare was widely regarded as one of the greatest writers in the English language and world literature. Shakespeare's works include Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, and Macbeth. This particular copy is one of 12 on vellum printed in 1899. So you can see that it has this incredible inlay work of Morocco um, leather on the interior. Given the quality and rarity of this vellum copy, how much would its value be? It would probably have an auction estimate of $5,000 to $7,000. Wow, yeah. really? This antique coffer or chest is shaped as an arc with its fascinating decoration. And what I think is fascinating is when you look at this decoration, I mean, all this is fairly typical. English and Dutch, North European furniture has a lot of cross similarities at this time. It features a unique shape designed to knead a dough. The guest brought it from her auntie for 300 pounds. 
But how much would she pay if her aunt sells it today? Yeah, well, that's a pretty good discount because, <laughs> well, you pay £300. I think you'd have to pay £3,000 today. Goodness. OK. <laughs> All right, to write them a cheque, I think. <laughs> <laughs> This is wonderful because it's a, a really good example. This guest fondly shares the story of her vintage Barbie, a cherished childhood toy. I brought Barbie, and when I was a kid, I had three other girlfriends, and we used to get together like every day after school and play with our Barbies. The Barbie is a 1965 American Girl edition by Mattel. There have been subtle changes in Barbie's features over the years, reflecting evolving fashion trends. So we're reflecting the fashion. Number one had just really harsh, sharp, upside down V eyebrows. Now we can see they're nice and soft and modern. You've got your blue eyeshadow on because who's a 60s girl without <laughs> their blue eyeshadow? The guest proudly presents the doll adorned in its original bathing suit, accompanied by a trunk full of meticulously tagged outfits, a pillbox hat, and the iconic Barbie stand. The appraiser estimates its value between $600 and $850. But would she sell it? Would retail between $600 and $850. Great, but I'll never give her up. <laughs> this Celadon charger has a fascinating origin. Gifted by the guest uncle who acquired it in post-war Japan, it's likely around 80 to 100 years old. The Celadon charger, marked with Chinese characters, was expertly stored in a box with a label revealing its contents. This label, by the way, says exactly the contents of the package. I've always wondered yeah, about this. Essentially, it says large Celadon porcelain okay. dish Yongzheng period. Okay. So it, it's good to see that the label matches the contents of the box. Sometimes boxes and ceramics are kind of put together that, that didn't originally go together. Yongcheng period is from 1722 to 1735. It's a very short period in Chinese history. When arguably some of the finest ceramics of all time were made, this exquisite piece values between eighty to $120,000. All right. <laughs> Really? <laughs> this guest brought his birthday present gifted by his father. He was quite disappointed as he was expecting a more modern instrument, not knowing that the gift he received is a 150-year-old 19th century monocular microscope. This fully working petrological microscope is designed for a specific purpose. And it is specifically made to examine mineral specimens, oh, crystals right. and things like that. Yeah. This incredible microscope is estimated to be around 1,500 to 2,000 pounds, a nicer present than he thought. Yes. <laughs> I didn't think it would be worth that much. <laughs> this guest brought his astonishing collection of small rounded storage. <laughs> These wonderful <laughs> tobacco boxes. Most people know them as miners' tobacco boxes. The miner restricted from taking tobacco to smoke would use these boxes to store tobacco. Notably, a group of these boxes appear to be crafted by the same maker, with variations in materials such as brass and nickel plating. Where did you get all these from? Oh, different antique shops and such like. What the an astonishing collection. But how much would his overall collection of tobacco boxes be worth? I would have thought for what you have here, plus your other 40, you've probably got a collection here worth £3,000. Oh, That's astonishing. That's, what a surprise. This guest mother, who was good at finding treasure, found this incredible piece in an antique store. This piece was inspired by the popular 1938 romantic comedy film The Cowboy and the Lady, starring Gary Cooper and Merle Oberon. The story revolves around a socialite woman who disguised herself as a maid and ends up meeting the cowboy. Despite the differences in their backgrounds, a romantic connection develops. The plywood creation captures the film's essence. It stands as a splendid example of folk art and kitsch. For $150, her mother paid for a captivating piece that is now valued at $1,800. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, That's crazy. That's it, just crazy. If you're a baseball fan, surely this story of three used bats will captivate you. 
The guest brought in three game-used bats from the Baltimore Orioles, originally owned by his father-in-law's best friend. The handwritten numbers matching the Louisville Slugger archives provides details for whom they were made. The bats were used by Brooks Robinson, Frank Robinson, and Boog Powell during the Orioles' glory days, winning the World Series in 1970. So you've got great players, you've got a great team, you've got the great years of the team. How much do these three bats and the cards cost? The Boog Powell game use bat would sell for $1,000 to $1,500. Frank Robinson bat would bring $5,000 to $8,000. But even better, let's talk about the Brooks Robinson bat. Ten to fifteen thousand. Oh my gosh, that's sensational! That is fantastic. The cards value not as much, about fifty dollars each. Given by the guest reaction, would she sell these bats, considering their highly estimated value? My son's getting married, as is my daughter, so perhaps this could help fund it. But just joking. This guest proudly presents a typed and signed speech by none other than Albert Einstein brought by her father-in-law. Albert Einstein was a renowned theoretical physicist who had a groundbreaking contribution to the understanding of space, time, and gravity. This unique document, addressing technological advancements and their impact on humanity, delves into the complexities of technological progress and its implications for happiness. He says, why does this magnificent applied science, which saves work and makes life easier, bring us so little happiness? The simple answer runs because we have not yet learned to make a sensible use of it. Despite its powerful message, the letter contains racist language regarding indigenous cultures. But it, to have him sign this speech with that powerful message mm -hmm. is really makes this such a powerful document. The rarity of such items value at ten to $20,000. Not that we're going to part with it, but hopefully it will be passed down to our, you know, grandchildren. This captivating outfit unfolds a story of generosity and style. The Fiesta dress is a gift from the guest aunt in the early 50s by designer Alita Wilson of Santa Fe Designs. The reason it's called a Fiesta dress is because once a year there'd be mm -hmm. a big fiesta and it would be the people of Spanish descent. It was primarily their holiday to celebrate and they would have elaborate outfits like this. The intricate work, featuring 83 rolls of rickrack on the skirt, showcases the dedication to craftsmanship. You have a wide elasticized band at the waist, yes. which matches the fabric in the blouse and in the skirt. The appraiser estimates the value of this piece at six to eight hundred dollars, emphasizing its beauty and meaningful journey. Nice, really yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, especially considering it was gifted to your aunt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then to my daughter and my granddaughters. A man brought his Rolex watch inherited from his grandfather. His grandfather consistently wore it, leaving a lasting impression, especially with its intriguing moon phases. The guest took it for repair due to some non-functional parts. They indicated that uh, it really wasn't worth fixing. This rare model watch was produced for a limited time in the early 1950s. This refurbished Rolex watch is estimated to be valued from $35,000 to $45,000. That's a big surprise. <laughs> well, that's great. In 1964, this man's grandfather visited Esther to commission this painting from Rusty Erlen. Rusty was an artist born in Sweden in the late 19th century. He loved Alaska, obviously. And this painting is what makes Alaska, Alaska. Passed down through generations, the painting became a cherished possession. They gifted it to me and, and my wife last year, so we have it hanging in our house. It uh, definitely has a lot of sentimental value. The painting has an enchanting and captivating palette. The snow, the musher, the northern lights. The artwork is valued at forty to $60,000. Wow. 
was not expecting that. <laughs> That's quite astounding. Don't plan on selling it. It's, it's a family piece. This guest brought a plastic lady's dressing compact from the 1920s. And if we open it up, we can see her uh, powder puffs and her lipstick inside. And this is simulated ivory. It is all plastic. Gifted by a friend's mother, it's now a valuable collector's item worth three to four hundred pounds. It's made to simulate tortoiseshell. You can see the spider in the web here. It's a lady's dressing compact, if you like. And if we open it up, we can see her... Uh, powder puffs and her lipstick inside, and this is simulated ivory. It is all plastic. Where did you get it from? My wife was given it by her friend of her mother's who hadn't got any daughters and wanted my wife to have it. Well, uh, these days they are very, very collectible, and something like this would probably sell at auction for between three and four hundred pounds. Oh, as much as that? Oh, she will be delighted, absolutely. Can't get enough of antique videos? Stick to this channel for more.